Chapter 23 Best of Enemies Cookie followed Alex and Eric into the woods. She twisted out of the duct tape that bound her hands and then tore the strip that held her in her screams, and she let loose an angry and frightened scream of freedom. Nobody dared to look back until they heard the van's tires squeal, and then they saw the evil black vehicle repeatedly slamming into the tree. They all stopped for a moment, and Eric even started to run back towards the van, but by then, the van was long gone. Eric buried his hands in his hair and fell to his knees. Cookie watched him, and she watched the van disappear into the distance. She was confused by her feelings. Luther had taken Lena, she realized, and to Cookie's surprise, that felt like a really big deal to her. What did I do? Eric cried out. I let them take her. Better her than me, Cookie thought. But with that thought, she felt a wave of guilt pass through her soul. And somehow, she felt tears welling in her eyes. Damn, did Lena really mean that much to her? Only a few minutes ago, Cookie was terrified for her life and her dignity while rough hands violated her body, but she felt no self-pity. All she could feel now was sympathy for Lena, who might be going through the same thing. Was Cookie really this good a person, deep down, that she could empathize after going through such hell herself? She had never thought of herself like that before, and she wasn't sure if she liked it. Caring was a road to ruin, her mom would often say, and Cookie had learned that lesson well. So why couldn't she help herself now? Alex ran to Eric and grabbed his hand. Come on, she said, and pulled him towards the woods. We have to find Kara. But what about Lena? Eric asked as though he was being ripped apart. Kara might be hurt, Alex said desperately. Besides, Kara might be the only person who can help Lena now. Eric nodded and the two ran off into the woods, running right by Cookie as if she wasn't there. Cookie ran after them, knowing they were running with a purpose, but she couldn't understand their reasoning. They ran along the road about sixty yards and then into the woods, but once there, they stalled. They were beyond the light from the cars on the road, though the moonlight and brief flashes from police cars gave them some illumination to work with. After a few minutes, their night vision would kick in, but for now, they could barely see the ground beneath their feet. Alex squinted and stared into the blackness, then finally yelled out as loud as she could, Kara! What are we doing? Cookie asked, feeling the same urgency, but this didn't make sense to her. Why the fuck are you looking for Kara? Alex stared at Cookie in disgust. You can go to the police if you want. I'm sure they'll take you home and you can forget about all of this. You never cared about anyone. Just let me look for my sister. I, I didn't mean to say anything bad about Kara, Cookie said. I just don't understand what we're doing. She crossed her arms in front of her chest and looked to Eric for a little support, but he just sneered back. Just go back to your elitist friends, Eric hissed. We don't need you. Don't pretend you care about Kara, Alex added. You've been trying to destroy her all year long. Oh, and you had nothing to do with that? Cookie snapped back. What did you call her? A freak? Didn't you tell me she was a curse and that she basically killed your dad? You made Kara into a leper. You can't pin that on me. Alex stopped what she was doing and looked at the ground, then up at Eric, who was staring back at her in disbelief. You don't understand. Those were bad days. I really didn't mean any of that. Well, I didn't mean the things I said either, Cookie replied. The hell you didn't. You sent Abby to trip Kara down the stairs, Alex countered while shaking her head. It sure looked like you meant it then. Cookie shook her head. I told Abby to lift Kara's skirt. That's all. Kara had acted like a slut, and you remember how it goes. It had to be done. Consequences. 
Cookie's voice went from indignant to sad. But Abby went rogue. Everyone did. I don't know what happened. Everyone changed. Or maybe I changed. I don't care, Alex said, with tears now streaming down her face. Please shut up. I need to find my sister. At least stop saying she's your sister. That only makes people hate you more, Cookie said. Maybe she was trying to be helpful. Maybe she just wanted the last word. Alex didn't seem to care either way. She ignored Cookie and hurried into the woods. Eric was already far ahead of them, and they hurried to catch up. Then, Eric stopped and threw his hands in the air. Was she here? I don't know, Alex replied helplessly. I didn't see her. I'm sorry, Cookie said. She didn't want to fight anymore, but she couldn't help but be argumentative when she asked. Why do you think Kara's here? I mean, how could she be? It doesn't make sense. Shouldn't she have run home or somewhere? She's here, Alex said angrily. If you want to go, nobody is stopping you. Eric stared at Cookie with venom in his eyes, too. And now, Cookie felt very uncomfortable and rejected, but she couldn't imagine herself as some pathetic leech clinging onto people as they tried to scrape her away. She should leave them alone, like they asked. While she was deciding... A bright light attacked them, nearly blinding them. Hello, kids, came the voice behind the powerful flashlight. What are you doing out here? A moment later, two other uniformed silhouettes appeared against the backdrop of idling cars and flashing police lights, and the three teens stared blankly, taking it all in, not saying a word. Another voice, this time from a lady cop, said, Drivers on the road told us they saw some kids jumping out of a black van and then running away from some men in this direction. Are you those kids? Cookie nodded. Normally, she would feel insulted being called a kid, but she felt very vulnerable and childlike right then. Alex was still distracted, squinting into the woods for her sister. Lex Luthor kidnapped us, Eric said anxiously, and he still has our friend Lena. Luther? exclaimed the first cop, and then he immediately turned away from the group and raised a walkie-talkie to his mouth, issuing commands. The lady cop pressed on with the teens. How did you escape? The van was blocked by those trees over there, Eric replied, and then Lex jumped out looking for Superman, and we just bolted. Just then, they heard a twig break, and the cop flashed his light in the direction of the sound. Kara was stumbling dizzily towards them, beyond a few trees. Alex ran to her, while everyone else just stared in disbelief. Kara looked like lightning had hit her after jumping out of a car. Her skirt and sweater were both gone, and now she was only wearing a pair of torn panties that were a thread away from a complete wardrobe malfunction, and the new tank top Lena had just bought her was now shredded and covered in dirt. Considering how much damage her clothes had sustained, it was amazing that none of her private parts were showing, but even more amazing that she didn't seem to have a scratch on her. Alex threw her arms around her sister. Are you okay? She asked after she caught her breath. Kara nodded. I don't know what happened. I just kind of passed out up there, she said, waving at the trees or sky. I must have fallen. Eric put his hand on Kara's shoulder, although his face was still somber. All the while, the cop and Cookie watched in wonder and amazement. What happened to you? The cop asked loudly, trying to get Kara's attention. Alex and Eric stared at Cookie as though Cookie was going to ruin everything. And Cookie almost did. She almost asked Kara... How the hell did you get here? But she bit her tongue when she saw the deathly stare Alex and Eric sent her way. She could see that they were not surprised in the least at seeing Kara here. They wanted to keep whatever happened here a secret, no matter what problems they had in the past, and no matter how much they resented Cookie, what they had just gone through today tied all four of them together. They weren't friends, 
and maybe they would never be, but they felt obligated to each other. Cookie especially felt like she owed Kara after all the cruelty she inflicted on Kara, and after how Kara had repaid her with kindness. So when nobody else answered the cop's question, Cookie responded with what she thought her new allies would want her to say. Those criminals tried to rape Kara. They got really rough, Cookie said, shivering and crossing her arms in front of her chest. So when we escaped, she ran ahead of us and we kind of lost her in the woods. Everyone stared at Cookie in surprise, so she stopped talking. Maybe she had miscalculated. Maybe it was obvious to everyone that she was really describing herself. But her story was believable, and the lady cop responded accordingly, asking Kara in a soft tone, Poor child, are you okay? Kara nodded, but she didn't look it. She gazed at the ground with a blank expression and shivering intermittently. Alex took off her black windbreaker and wrapped it around Kara, providing Kara with a modicum of warmth and modesty. But Kara's expression remained the same. Kara looked very much like she had been violated. Kara looked very much how Cookie felt right then, and Cookie knew Kara could sense it too. What had happened to her? Cookie pondered. Why was everything about Kara always so mysterious? And why did Cookie feel so connected to her now, even after all the obstacles Cookie had put in their way? The lady cop pulled out a notepad and pencil and asked, Did one of you call 911? We tracked the call to here. Kara rose her hand like she was answering a teacher in school. Your name is? Kara, Kara replied simply, then remembered to add, Danvers. Where is the phone now? The cop continued. Kara looked at her hand, then towards the woods. I dropped it, I think. Do any of you know where the suspects were going? Kara answered immediately, as though the question was directed at her. They are going someplace to fire some nuclear missiles at terrorists. Everyone was shocked at Kara's response, though not at all for the same reasons. The cops said, Stay right here, as she ran over to the rest of the cops. When they were alone, Cookie asked in a whisper, How did you know that? Don't answer that, Alex instructed Kara quickly, and rudely, Cookie felt. Why? Cookie asked Alex urgently. How did she get here? Cookie now knew not to expect a response, but their sudden secrecy was upsetting. Whatever was going on, they were all in this together. Couldn't they see that? Silence. You know they're going to ask us a lot of questions. Cookie tried again. If you have some secret, fine. I wouldn't trust me either, but we at least need to get our story straight. What should I tell them? Alex and Eric looked at each other, almost panicky. They knew they had to give up something. Kara looked at Cookie honestly and said simply, I'm special. Cookie nodded. That was kind of obvious now, but it was not enough. Cookie knew all about manipulation, but now she was trying to protect a secret that she wasn't privy to. Maybe if she could keep her mouth shut, they could get by, but the cops would likely be questioning them as much as possible now that they knew Lex was involved. Truth or lies, they needed to coordinate something that made sense. Okay, forget about where you were, Cookie decided, then asked Kara, what did you tell them at 911? Nothing, Kara said. I dialed, but I didn't say anything. Cookie nodded. She had heard that cops could track a cell phone. She just didn't know how well. Okay, so this is what you say. You dialed 911 just before those assholes attacked you, but then you had to hide the phone before you could say anything. Kara nodded, and nobody disagreed. Cookie wondered if they really want for her to take charge when they didn't even trust her with the truth. Okay, Cookie breathed more easily, comforted that they had a plan, even if it was a bad one. She thought she looked calm, but then realized that she was fiddling with the buttons on her blouse, making sure they were all there and fastened. That was bad. A sign of weakness.
she did not feel like herself. Cookie noticed that both Alex and Eric were staring at her. She worried about what they were thinking. One of the buttons on her blouse broke off between her fingers. She forced her hands down at her side. She had to look calm, not for the cops and not for anyone, only for herself. Her former friends had broken her a few days ago, and now Lex's lackeys had almost done it again. She couldn't be someone out of control now. She just couldn't. Cookie felt like a common criminal in a grimy interrogation room. She felt sympathy for all of the defendants her dad had grilled in the courtroom, trying to get them to crack. She had so many secrets which she felt too ashamed to see brought out into the open, and she was afraid that all of her sins were about to be laid bare in front of her. That's what it felt like, but in reality, she was just sitting in a detective's office at the police station, and the two officers who were questioning her were very kind. The two cops couldn't have looked any more different. The taller one was in a full police uniform and clean-shaven. The shorter cop appeared to be the boss. He was wearing a white dress shirt that was a size too small, and he had a thin beard that didn't look intentional. He looked exhausted. But they both seemed very professional. Do I need a lawyer? Cookie asked. They both raised an eyebrow and looked at each other. Well, if you think it might help, let us know, but we just want to ask a few questions about what happened to you. You're not suspected of anything. We just want to know anything you can tell us that will help us find your friend, Lena. And Lex Luther, Cookie reminded herself. Did they even give a small shit for Lena? Lex Luther was at the top of the FBI wanted list, and Lena was just a high school student currently with purplish hair, but it didn't matter if the police cared. Finding Lex would help them find Lena. Why do you think they took her? Asked the boss cop as he brought a steaming mug of coffee to his lips. Don't you know who she is? Cookie asked, and then suddenly worried that maybe it was the secret she was supposed to keep. Do you know who she is? The cop asked. I guess it doesn't matter now who knows. Yes, Lena is Lex's sister, and frankly, I was really surprised to find that you two were friends given who your dad is. Hearing him describe the two girls as friends made Cookie feel both comforted and guilty. Lena is not like Lex. She's a good person. You still feel that way after Lena led you right to him? The cop tested. Lex only wanted Lena, Cookie insisted. We were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. If she's so good, why did Lex want her so badly? Asked the taller cop. Cookie hesitated. Lena's telepathy was a big secret. She knew sure of that much, but it would be an important secret for the police to know. Lex wanted Lena for her ability to read the minds of whoever knew the nuclear launch codes. Shouldn't Cookie tell the police that? Wasn't that important? But telling the cops would feel like a betrayal to Lena and to her friends. And strangely, that mattered to Cookie. Any idea at all? Why Lex took her. The boss cop tried again. Sometimes the silliest thoughts are the keys to the puzzle. Cookie shook her head, but she wanted to give them something. I just know that Lena knows something that will help Lex launch some missiles. The boss's eyes grew wide open. She knows the codes. Maybe, Cookie replied. That was close enough to the truth. I guess so. He frantically scribbled in his notebook, then tore the page out and gave it to the other cop, saying simply, FBI, now. The tall cop nearly ran out of the office, leaving the door open a crack. Now Cookie was there, alone with the boss. Just one more thing, and then you can go, he said, as he sifted through his notes. Well, a few things, really, I just can't make sense of. What about the two trees that fell across the road? These were two healthy trees that fell on a clear, windless night. It was like they were pushed over to stop traffic. Any idea what happened there? It all just seems too convenient. Cookie shook her head innocently. That wasn't an act. She had no idea, and she hadn't given it a thought until right then. Now that he had described what had happened in words, it did seem very strange. The cop frowned. How about the 911 call? 
Did you see Miss Danvers make the 911 call? Cookie shook her head again. It's just strange that the call lasted almost 10 minutes, but all we have recorded was the sound of wind and traffic sounds. You told us earlier that Mr. Luther was talking almost constantly, so I don't understand why we can't hear anything he said. Do you have any idea where the cell phone was? Did it fall out of the van? Cookie stared at the cop in disbelief, but all she could do was shake her head. She had no idea that the phone even existed, or why the call would contain wind sounds, or most mysteriously, how Kara ended up in the woods right next to the van. It was almost as though she had flown there. The cop shook his head, clearly frustrated as Cookie was becoming. Okay, one last thing. Several witnesses saw Mr. Luther shoot something in the sky that fell to the ground. Do you know what that was about? All I remember is that Lex suspected that Superman was outside the van, so he jumped out of the van and started shooting, Cookie said. Then her eyes opened wide as the facts suddenly came together in her mind. They had found Kara in the woods, as though she had fallen from the sky. If she had been flying, then the wind sounds on the phone made sense. If she had been flying, then maybe she could have followed them on the highway without being seen. It all made sense now, yet it was totally insane. Then Cookie remembered how Kara had run away from her house on Christmas Eve. So light on her feet, she looked like she was flying. Kara's words came back to Cookie. I'm special, she had said. What an understatement! The cop shook his head in frustration as he stuffed papers into a folder and gestured for Cookie to get up. Well, thank you for your help, Miss Clifford, he said while leading her out of the office. I believe we have what we need for now. If you remember anything, no matter how small, call this number. If you need a ride home, please wait in the lobby. I see your friends are already there. Cookie paused when she saw her friends sitting on a bench. Kara was staring back at her. How much could Kara see with her stare? Could she see right through her?